Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a tube top dress. For this design, we took some magical girl vibes, a little fairy dust, and a little bit of modern aesthetic, threw it all in a blender, and it came out with this cutie. Not bad for our first tube top dress. Speaking of, whether if this is your first project or you're looking for your next project, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet designs and patterns with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 450 grams of yarn, and that's 750 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what piece of tech you can't live without. Mine has always been, and probably will always be, my computer. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, and you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this dress started, we're all going to grab our Category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making an odd number chain that starts 1 inch underneath our underarm down to where our hip is. So I need a total of 11 inches or 28 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 51. So now that we have our chain, we're going to do our set stitches all the way down. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And for our first sedge stitch for every row, it's going to be a half double and double crochet into that same stitch. So yarn over. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through. When we have three loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over, pull through three. That's our half double, and now we're going to do a double into that same chain. So yarn over, into that same chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is always going to be our first sedge stitch for every row. Now after that, we are going to skip two chains, and then into that following stitch, we're going to do our regular sedge stitches, which is a single half double double, all into that same stitch. So we're going to skip one, skip two. Into that following, insert with a single crochet, and then into that same chain with a half double, and then into that same chain with a double crochet. And from here, we're going to continue to do this sedge stitch until we have two chains left. So let's do this again. Let's skip one, skip two. Into that following chain, insert with a single, into that same chain, half double, and into that same chain, a double crochet. And after that set, we're always going to skip two into the next single half double double. And in between our sedge stitches, we are always going to skip two stitches in between because the half double and double count as those two stitches that we're skipping. If we work into those two following stitches, we will be accidentally increasing. Continue on with our sedge stitch until we have two chains left. We just made our way all the way down with our first row leaving the last two chains. Now we're going to do an increase. So how that's going to work is into that last stitch that we have, we're going to do a single half double and two double crochets, and that is going to be an increase of four. So we're going to skip one, and into that last chain, we're going to insert with a single, a half double, and then with two double crochets, and that's all into that same last chain. So there's my first, there's my second, 
and that is my increase. Now from here, our row two is going to be a regular sedge stitch row, so no increases and no decreases. So from here, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and get started with our first sedge stitch, remembering that our first one is only a half double and double crochet into that first stitch. So yarn over, into that first stitch, insert with a half double, and then with a double crochet, and then to do our following sedge stitch, we're going to skip one, skip two, just like how we skipped two chains for the first row, and then into that following, it's going to be a single, same stitch, a half double, and then to the same stitch again with a double crochet. And that's basically it. Continue to do this until we have two stitches left. And just as a really quick tip, each of our sedge stitches now is going to be worked into our previous rows single crochet to get the texture that we want. We are at the end of our row two, and since we're at the bottom of our piece now, we're just going to do one half double crochet into the last stitch to keep it blunt. So we should have one, two stitches left, so we're all going to yarn over, skip that second to last stitch, and into that last stitch, insert with a half double. And that's it. For this pattern, we're going to be increasing, just like how we did for row one, into every other odd number row. So since we're about to get started on our row three, it's going to be exactly the same as our row two. So to get that started, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and start our sedge stitch with a half double, and double. And then skip one, skip two, into that following single, half double, double, and continue this until we have two stitches left. We now have our rows one, two, and three nearly finished. We should have one, two stitches left at the end of our row three, and like I said, we're going to be increasing into every other odd number row. So we are not going to be closing off this row with an increase. All we're going to do is yarn over and insert your hook into that last stitch with one half double crochet. And we have one, two, three rows finished. Our row four is going to be another sedge stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So chain one, flip our work, and then repeat our sedge stitch all the way down. At the end of that, we're going to chain one, flip our work to get started on a row five, and since that is our next odd number row that we're going to be increasing into, we're going to do our sedge stitch all the way down until we have two stitches left. So I'll meet you back when we are nearly finished with our row five. So we are back and we are nearly finished with our first five rows. So just to count it out together, it's actually easier to count out the blunt end. So let's do that. Here is one, two, three, four, and five. And at the end of our fifth row, we should all have one, two stitches left. So now we're gonna close it off with the same increase as our row one. So we're gonna skip that second to last stitch and into that last, we're gonna insert with a single, with a half double, and then two double crochets into that same last stitch. And that is our increase. And from here, we're going to continue to repeat our four previous rows. And just as a quick tip, I do like to insert my stitch markers into the increase ends, just so I can see where those are a little bit easier. So from here, all we're gonna do is chain one, flip our work, and then do our sedge stitch, making our way all the way down, closing off that row with a half double crochet. We're gonna be doing two more of those rows, so three sedge stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. Our following sedge stitch row which is going to be our ninth row, we're gonna close it off with an increase the same way that we increased for our row one and row five. And we're gonna continue on with that sequence until we have a portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to the middle of our chest. And I'll meet you back right after we finish up an increase row so we can get started on the middle row and then the decrease side. So I am back with the first half of my front panel. I have a total of 17 rows and my width is five inches or 13 centimeters. Now from here, we're going to get started on our middle row, but we all just wanna double check and make sure that the last row that we did was an increase row because we wanna be able to mirror both sides. But once we have that, our middle row is going to be a sedge stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So from where we're at, we're gonna chain one, flip our work and then do our sedge stitch all the way back up, closing it off with a half double crochet. Then I'll meet you back so we can get started on our first decrease row for the other side of our piece. So 
So I'm back and my middle row is all finished. Right before we get started on our falling row, we do want to make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into that middle row just so we know where it's at, so we know where to do our increases for the bottom portion. So what we're going to do from here, since we are along the top, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then do our sedge stitch all the way back down, leaving the last five stitches, and then I'll meet you back to do our decrease. All right, so I made my way all the way down with my first decrease row, leaving the last one, two, three, four, five stitches. And what we're going to do from here is a decrease of four half double crochets so we can mirror the increases that we have on this side. So we're all going to yarn over. We're going to skip that following stitch and then into the stitch right after that we're going to insert, pull through into that third to last stitch, pull through into that second to last stitch, and then into that last stitch, pull through. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all one, two, three, four, five, six loops on our hook. And that is going to be how we do our decrease for our row. Now from here, it is going to mirror the other half that we have. So since we just did a decrease row, we're going to be doing three sedge stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. And then I will meet you back so we can do one more decrease row together. All right, so we are back and we're about to do another decrease row. So I left you guys when we just finished our first decrease row and right after that we should have one, two, three sedge stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. So after that third sedge stitch row, we should all be along the top. So we're gonna chain one, flip our work and then do our sedge stitch, making our way all the way back down until we have five stitches left again. Now let's do our decrease of four half double crochets once more. So we're all going to yarn over, skip that next stitch into the stitch right after, pull through, into that third to last, pull through, into that second to last, pull through, and once more into that last last, pull through. We should have one, two, three, four, five, six loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through all six, chain one to get started on our following row, flip our work, and then do three sedge stitch rows with no increases and no decreases, and then our decrease row after that. We're gonna continue to repeat those four rows until we have the same amount of rows as our first half of our piece, making sure that we're not counting our middle row. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. So I am back and the entirety of my front panel's finished. I have a total of 35 rows and my width is just about 11 inches or 28 centimeters unstretched. And once we have one of our front panels all finished, we're going to repeat the same thing for a second panel. And once we have both of these all finished up, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. So now that both of our panels are finished, we're now going to do a single crochet seam. So placing the front panel on top of the back panel, we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch, insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam all the way down. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, find that first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook and we're gonna single crochet. And if you're like me, you have some tail ends, go ahead and place it over your hook if you don't wanna weave them in later. And we're just going to single crochet over everything. Let's do that again. Let's start by finding that next available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and again, single crochet over everything. And that's it, we're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. So now that both of our sides are all seamed up, we're going to flip our work right side out, meaning all of our seams are now along the inside. And we're going to insert our hook into any one of the top side rows that we have, because now we're going to start working on our top band. So what we're gonna do is start with a single crochet row. So I've inserted my hook, I'm going to do a chain one, and now we're going to find our first side row. Now this is my first side row right here. We're gonna start with a single crochet. So I'm gonna find that top loop and insert my hook into there with just one single crochet. We're gonna find our following side row, which this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one and there's two. And we're gonna continue to alternate like that, making our way all the way around. So let's do this again. 
This is my following side row right over here. I'm going to find that top loop and just insert with a single crochet. And then into my following side row, insert my hook in through there with two single crochets. And we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around. And just as a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So once we made our way all the way around and slip stitched into that chain space, try on our piece and just make sure that this single crochet row can still fit around us. If it's a little too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. All right, so our single crochet row for our top band is all finished, and now we're going to start working on the height. So right after we have slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to make a chain, the height that we'd like for our top band to be. Now I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain six. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna get started with our first slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And we're gonna insert our hook into that second chain from our hook with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, and gently pull through everything. Again, into that following chain, insert, yarn over, and gently pull through everything. And continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling row can be too tight to work into. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to connect it into the base. So we're all going to start by finding that next available stitch. Slip stitch into there to connect our row one. That slip stitch into the base does not count as a stitch, that's just the chain that needs to be connected. And we do need to work our way up to the following row as well. So we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Also doesn't count as a stitch and we're going to flip our work. And now from here, we're going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So start by finding that last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over and pull through everything and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, still remembering not to tug too tightly. At the end of our row, we are going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we make our way back down towards the base, and then I will meet you back to connect it just once more. And now that we have made our way all the way down with our first three rows, we're gonna connect it into the base. So into that next available stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through everything, to connect our row three, and just to work our way up to our row four, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then repeat with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and that's it. We're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I will meet you back so we can seam everything together. So we've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, and now we're going to seam everything together. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, and then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So we're all gonna start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert in through that front loop. Into that first stitch into the back panel, insert in through that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. That's our first outside loop slip stitch seam. Let's do another one. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop and pull through everything and that's it. We are going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that our top band is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on the skirt. So what we're gonna do is make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, and we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam, and we're going to start with a single crochet row. So we're all gonna start by doing a chain one, and we're going to be alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row, just like how we did for our top band. Now we are going to want to keep the front panel and back panel separated, and then we're going to seam the sides just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So what we're gonna do, once we find our first side row, we're gonna insert with our first single crochet, and then we're going to insert our stitch marker into that first stitch. And now we're gonna continue to alternate between one to two. So this is my following side row. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there with two single crochets. So there's one into that same top loop with two. 
let's just do this one more time. This is my following side row, insert with one, and then into my following side row with two. So here's one, and then into that same top loop with two. And we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way up until we reach our middle row, which is our stitch marker stitch. So we've single crocheted our way all the way down, and we are now at our middle row, which our stitch marker should be in. Into that middle side row, we're gonna be doing an increase of three single crochets, so go ahead and take out your stitch marker for now. And then into the top of that middle row, we're going to do one, into that same top loop with two, and into that same top loop with three single crochets, and be sure to insert your stitch marker into that second single crochet that we made, so we know where the middle row is. And then from here, we're going to continue to alternate between one to two single crochets all the way down, just like how we did on this side, working our way up. We should have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our stitch marker stitch, and I'll meet you back when we're worked into that last side row right before our side seam. So our single crochet row along one of our panels is all finished. We have reached our last side row right before our side seam, and now we're going to repeat everything we just did here on the other side. We just wanna make sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into that last single crochet that we have before our side seam to match this first stitch marker over here. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, so go ahead and flip your work. What we're gonna do is continue to alternate between one to two single crochets, making our way all the way back up into that side row. Into our middle side row, we're gonna be doing an increase of three single crochets and inserting our stitch marker into that second stitch. So we know where the middle stitch is, and we do wanna make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into the first and into the last single crochet that we have. When we made our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you back. So our single crochet row along the entirety of our bottom is finished. We're gonna be doing one more single crochet row, but now within the back loops just to get a little bit of ribbing and to make our piece a little bit sturdier for our skirt. So all we're gonna do right after we slip stitch into that chain space is chain one and put one single crochet into every back loop. And we wanna make sure that we're working in the same direction that we were working for, for the previous row so that we get the nice ribbing. So I'm gonna take out my stitch marker stitch for now, cause we are going to make sure that we're inserting our stitch markers into the same stitches. And we're gonna find that first stitch, insert in through that back loop with a single crochet and be sure to insert your stitch marker into that stitch. And just continue to put one single crochet into every back loop, inserting our stitch markers into the same stitches. Well, we've made our way all the way around. I'll meet you back so we can get started on the length of our skirt. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our back loop single crochet row, we're now ready to get started on the length of our skirt. So we've slip stitched into that chain space and now we're going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our skirt to be so we can make this as long or as short as we like. We just need to make sure that the chain that we're about to make needs to be at least double the amount of stitches that we have from our first stitch marker over to our middle stitch marker. And we're only doing that because we don't do enough chains that once we do our decreases, we might not have enough rows to continue to make our way over to our middle stitch. So just as an example, from this stitch marker over to my stitch that I have right before my stitch marker, I have a total of 26 stitches. So I'm gonna make a chain of 60 because I want mine to be roughly mid-thigh. So I'm gonna start by making that chain and that is just about 14 inches or 35 centimeters. But once we have our chain, we're ready to get started on our half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. We're gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook with a half double crochet and that's it. We are going to continue to put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last two. So we've made our way all the way down with our half double crochets. We should have two chains left and now we're going to do a decrease of two half double crochets. So we're all gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that second to last chain, yarn over, pull through, and then also into that last chain, yarn over, pull through for a total of four loops on our hook. Then just yarn over, pull through all four, and now we're gonna connect it into the base. So the next stitch that we should have into the base should be our stitch marker stitch. So we are going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through everything, and now our first row is nice and attached. So let's get started on our following row. We're gonna insert our hook into that next available stitch into the base. So insert, yarn over, pull through everything, 
and now we're going to flip our work. Now we're going to be decreasing into every other row. So when we're at the base working our way out, we're just gonna be putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Let's do one together, yarn over, find that next stitch's back loop, insert, pull through, pull through all three. So a regular half double crochet after you insert into that back loop. Continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch at the end of the row, chain two, flip our work and continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch leaving the last two stitches right before the base so we can decrease and connect it together once more. So I am back and we should all have one, two, three rows nearly finished. At the end of our row three, we should have one, two stitches available. And now we're gonna do a decrease of two back loop half double crochets. So pretty much the same decrease that we did for our row one. So we're all gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last stitches back loop, pull through, and when we have those four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four. And now since we want the skirt to ruffle out a little bit, the way that we're going to connect it into the base is going to be a little bit different. So connecting it into the base, right after this odd number row, we're going to slip stitch it into that same stitch that our previous row is worked into, so that stitch will be occupied. So we're gonna bring our hook down and into that stitch that our previous row is worked into, Yarn over, pull through everything with a slip stitch. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch and that closes off our odd number row. And then to work our way up to our even number row, we're just gonna slip stitch into that following stitch, which is the next available stitch. That slip stitch also doesn't count as a stitch. Flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now at the end of the row, chain three, Flip our work and make our way all the way back up, putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch again, leaving the last two so we can connect it together just once more. So we are back and we should all have one, two, three, four, five rows nearly finished, leaving the last two and now we're going to do a decrease of two together. So again, yarn over into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop, pull through, pull through all four and now let's connect it into the base together once more. We're gonna insert our hook into that same stitch that our previous rows worked into, so the occupied stitch, to close off our odd number row. And then to work our way up to our even number row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and for every even number row, we are not gonna be doing any increases or decreases. So just put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And we're going to continue to repeat these two rows, making our way all the way down until we are worked into that stitch that we have that's right before our middle stitch. And then I'll meet you back to show you what we're going to do with our middle stitch marker. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up the decrease half of our skirt and now we're going to do the middle row and then the increase half. So we should all be along the base and into that middle stitch that we have, we're going to do a back loop half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases. So pretty much the same way that we have been doing everything else. So make our way down to the end of this row putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now at the end of this row, we're going to chain two, flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch so I can show you how we're going to do an increase, connect it into the base, and then it's gonna be a repeat. So I am back, my middle row is all finished. That's my row with my stitch marker in it. You don't need to insert it into there, I just wanted to do it just for visuals. But at the end of the row, I chain two, flip my work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last stitch, because now we're going to be increasing until we reach our stitch marker along the edge. So what we're gonna do from here is yarn over, and into that last stitch, we're gonna insert with two back loop half double crochets into that same last stitch. So there's one, and then into that same last stitch, there is two. And that's it, from here we're gonna connect it into the base the same way. Now I don't need my middle stitch marker anymore, so I'm just going to take mine out, and I'm going to slip stitch it into that stitch that my previous row has worked into. So the last occupied stitch, insert, pull through everything. And we're still only increasing into every other row. So to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch, flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. From there, continue to repeat those two previous rows, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did until we reach our stitch marker along the other side of our hip. And once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. 
So I am back and I have just finished up the increase portion of my skirt. I have made my way all the way over to my stitch marker on the other side and did a chain up a one and cut. And once we have this first side all finished up, we're actually going to repeat everything that we just did here for the other side. So just insert your hook into that falling stitch marker, make the same chain and then repeat everything, working our way all the way around to the other stitch marker that we have, but don't do a chain up a one and cut there so that we can seam up one of our sides together. All right, so we are back and now we're going to seam our sides together. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out, meaning the seams that we have for the body are now along the outside. And then we're gonna insert our hook into the first stitch into the front panel and first stitch into the back panel because it's going to be the same seam as the body. So all we're gonna do is find that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. And since we already know how to do this, let's just do one more, find that next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, single crochet, and that's it. Continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up a one and cut, and then repeat this on the other side. All right, so I am back, and we have just finished up seaming our skirt on both sides, and we are all done. Last thing we're going to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.